Okay, so uh, now how can we define matrices in MATLAB? And how can we uh, make operations on matrices and arrays or vectors in general? Now, let's begin with a vector first. So let's say that we have a capital X. Then I put square brackets. Then I put numbers. Give a space. Now I have a, a vector of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members. So one to seven uh, matrix. Basically, this is how it's going to appear. Then I press enter. Now I have my vector. I want to call the third member of third element of this vector. So I write the name of the vector, then I put uh, it in parentheses. So it is 34. Now I want the fifth or seventh member uh, and it is 0 0.1 that's okay so now one thing special with the uh, matrices and vectors is even though um, you define the vector beforehand uh, it makes an automatic allocation so now I can define the eighth member of the vector x. And let's say that this is 101, 101. You see now, as seen here, it is the eighth member is 101. So it makes dynamic allocation, dynamic memory allocation. You don't need to define the uh, vector sizes or array sizes in general beforehand. So uh, during the uh, calculations, you can dynamically update the size. This is what is uh, special with the MATLAB. In fact, you, uh, different than the C and uh, Fortran, which you have to allocate certain amount of memory for certain uh, array. Okay, so we have defined the, our vector x. Now let's define a matrix. So our matrix is, I will say that it's A. Now again, for one, three, five, so the first row is four, one, four, six. Now I put a semicolon here for the second row. And again, it is five, one, three, six. And I close the square brackets. You see my matrix now. So it is two by four matrix. Again, I can dynamically allocate it, but since the dimensions are not consistent, uh, I cannot multiply A with X. So let's define a, another array, which is which has members 2 and 2.5. Okay. Now I want to multiply A with X. And let's see whether it will work. No. Why? Because X1 is a row vector. I have to define 
a column vector. Remember that the column number of columns has to be equal to the number of rows. Okay, so let's increase the size three, one. Again, dimensions do not match. Now what I'm going to do is I will take the transpose of it. Now transpose First, let me take the transpose of x1. Now, as you see, now I have a column vector. And let's say that this is x2, which is transpose of 1. Now, I will multiply this is a matrix vector multiply multiplication. Now it's okay. You see? So it does it automatically. Now there is another point with MATLAB. I can easily get the size. of a you see it is a two by four matrix as you see here this is the size of a now the point is this i can assign it to a variable let's say say let me say that endim this is equal to size A. Now I have the endem. And then one will be two. As you see. And I will call end two, it's four. So I can easily get the size of a matrix or array in general. If even if I don't know the dimension. Okay. Of course, the matrix is a, a two-dimensional array and the vector is a one-dimensional array, but perhaps you can define three, four, five, or 100-dimensional arrays in MATLAB. So no problem about that. Just the number of indices will increase. So that is how it's going to work. OK, so these are the things related with the Uh, MATLAB, but let's calculate the determinant of A. This is something that we have a little, and I say that that A, and let me check. It gives me an error. Now, it tells me that A has to be a square matrix in order to calculate the determinant of A. Okay, let me define a matrix B then. It is 3, 2, 1, 5. I'm just 
defining an arbitrary one. 5.1, 2.21, that's also okay. 10. So I'm defining a three by three matrix. Eight, nine point one, four point eight. I have to give a space between the numbers in order uh, MATLAB uh, to differ the elements. So, okay, now I have a three by three matrix. And let me calculate the determinant of B. I say that B it is minus 532. Okay, so I can calculate the determinant of B. In fact, I can calculate the transpose of B easily. Look, so as you see, the places of the elements of the matrix B has changed. So the Second column of the first row goes to the second row of the first column. Third row of the first row goes to the third, sorry, uh, third column of the first row goes to the third uh, row of the first column. And of course, uh, second row of the first column goes to the first row of the second column. And where else? It's on the diagonal, the diagonal numbers do not change. And Second row of the third column goes to the third row of the second column. And this goes here. And this goes here. So basically, we change the elements with respect to the diagonal members. So it is just mirrored with respect to the diagonal. Okay, so the MATLAB does it automatically. This is something good. We can easily calculate the determinant. We don't need to uh, worry about it. It does it automatically, regardless of the size of the uh, matrix. So the size of the matrix can be very large. So it's not necessarily three by three. It can be one million to one million. It's just a matter of uh, CPU time, in fact. Okay, so this is an, another thing about the uh, matrix, but of course, the matrix not necessarily be a square matrix. We can calculate the transpose of uh, non-square matrix. For example, remember that A is Ah, yeah, I use square brackets, some bad habits from Mathematica. Okay, so this is the transpose of it. Now, in fact, I can multiply transpose of A with X maybe. Oops. So again, it has to be a column vector. 
So transpose of x as well. Why? Ah, so the size of the x was eight. This is my no, x1 has 4 and x2 is 4 as well. Okay, so uh, I cannot multiply it. I have to create a vector which has uh, two members. That's okay. So one thing about the uh, matrix is let's multiply x with x. Hmm. Now remember that x is a row vector and the second vector has to be a column vector as well. Therefore I have to take the transpose. As you see I get a scalar quantity because I multiply the uh, I make the scalar multiplication of x with its uh, itself. And this is the same Thing that I did in uh, statics course, remember that I multiplied two vectors by scalar multiplication. Here I had to use the transpose command because x is a row vector and so the second vector has to be a column vector. So let me check for example x1. Yes, it is uh, four members. Now let me define x3 a column vector with four members 4 3 76 and 1 now I will multiply x1 with x3 you see so if one vector is, if the first vector is row vector, second vector has to be a column vector. In fact, I cannot multiply x3 with x1. Just multiply its members directly. So it's not a scalar multiplication anymore. MATLAB does not understand it like this. So basically what it makes is it multiplies the rows, each member of the row. So let me write it like this. Let's take the uh, x3 and x1. Okay. Now let's check what it does. Now I have 4 here and I have 2 here. So multiplication gives me 8. Now I multiply 4 with 2.5. It's 10. 4 with 3 it's 12 so the first element of the x3 is multiplied with all the members then this forms the first row then the second one 3 multiplied by 2 it's 6 3 multiplied by 2.5 it's 7.5 3 multiplied by 3 it's 9 3 multiplied by 1 it's 3 now there is something uh, special with the MATLAB now remember that I want to multiply two vectors x1 
and I put the dots here and I want to multiply x1. So basically, when you put the dots here, this means that just multiply the members. So it is two. Remember that the first member is two. And I multiply the vector with itself. So it is four. 2.5 to 2.5, it is 6.25. Three multiplied by three, nine. One multiplied by one, it's one. So let's do it for the x3 again. Let's check whether it will work or not. It didn't. Now what I need to do is I have to take the transpose of it. Now x3 becomes a transpose of x3 is a row vector now. And if you put a dot, ah, wrong spelling. You see now? So the first member of the x3 is multiplied by 8. Or let's say like this x4 is equal to transpose of x3 then I have x1 now I want to multiply x1 each member of x1 with each member of x4 then I put it out here so what happens is like this simple 4 multiplied by 2 gives you 8 Now, 3 multiplied by 2.5 gives you 7.5. Then, if you multiply 76 with 3, it will give you 228 if you multiply one with one it will give you one of course there are many other things that you can do with MATLAB uh, so this is simply MATLAB is a little bit flexible on array manipulations and array calculations operations on arrays but basically you can use transpose uh, determinant and of course um, you can calculate the inverse of a matrix as soon as it is uh, square um, this is an unsquare one so I think we have the B yes the B is a square one so let me calculate the inverse in yes the command in MATLAB is in inverse is in Mathematica again sorry uh, now you have the inverse of B you can easily check it in B multiplied by B will give you the identity matrix as you see here,
you have minus zero 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 something because of the round offs. Let's say that this is C so C two You see, this is just due to the roundoffs. So one good beginning with the roundoff errors for even simple matrix uh, immersion or matrix multiplication. Of course, there are many other things. Uh, we are going to see them in the forthcoming uh, courses.